Welcome to another video by Odd Job Fix. I'm Zeke, your host, and this is a little preview of what I have. Now, I only received the lid because that's the only damage that was on this. So let's take a quick look. And here we have it. So now we're going to look at some of the, the damage and assess this. Now the first thing I see, and this is not unusual, are little paint splatters. I don't think I get very many pieces that don't have little paint splatters on them. I'm going to flip this around. And I see a stain here. have a piece of veneer missing. Here we've got a piece of veneer that's completely missing on the bias there. That should be pretty. But this piece of inlay stops. And I'd say that's about three quarters, seven eighths of an inch of inlay that's missing. And just a little bit on the corner here. And then going full circle we're back to this stain here which is there's quite a bit of a lift right there. I tried to show that on an angle. Now today is the day I want to focus on some of the paint splatters that are on this piece. I'm just keeping it in the, uh, the box that was shipped in because it's easy to move around. Now I've got two ways to do this. This is a palette knife and it's got a, a nicely detailed edge. You just pop them off. I'm doing the closest I can to show you how that's done. So sometimes there's a little sweet spot right on the end of the knife there, and you can just feel it. You wouldn't want to do this to your Steinway black lacquered piano because it does leave a little bit of a mark. But remember, we've got all this damage here, and we're going to be doing some some finish work on this thing, at least a French polish. I'm not going to refinish it, but um, this is the first thing you want to do because you don't want to wax over these. You end up capturing them. I can feel this one is down inside the grain a little bit, so this is not a good place for the palette knife. It's a good place for the corner of the blade. Now what we're going to use here for our first cleaning process is some mineral spirits. I'm not sure what that's called in England. It's because spirits are, it's in England are alcohol. There's not much finish. I know that this is going to hurt. But certainly, alcohol would damage lac. Lacquer thinner would damage lacquer. But this, as far as I know, has never hurt anything. If there's any wax on there, this is going to get it off. There's another product that you can use which is called um, Wax Wash Remover, which is something that's used in the touch-up business quite a bit. And then again, I don't know of any finishes that, that was, was going to harm. So I'm not going to work real hard to get down in any kind of grooves right now. On the other hand, I really don't want to wipe anything into the grooves, but this is looking pretty clean. Now that I think that this is clean, I'm going to use a gray scotch bright pad and just give this a light scuff. I could use this or I could use the, uh, the, uh, the paint thinner. Be very careful not to pick anything up, rip any of the inlay out. But what we want to see is if this gets any of the last remaining paint splatters out without digging into the finish too much. I'm going to go with the grain. It's a little hard to do around the inlay, so you just lighten up on the pressure a little bit. Grain here. 
there. Now just for general information, there is even another way to clean furniture when it comes in for uh, any kind of repair. Um, there are some window wash compounds that are safe to use on outer muddy paint, even between coats, believe it or not. There are some window washing compounds that you have to stay away from. Now the next thing I want to test for is what kind of finish this is. So I have some alcohol here. Uh, this is 200 proof alcohol. This is pharmaceutical alcohol. I don't know that that's necessary, but in California we can't buy alcohol for thinning shellac or whatever, so we go to the drugstore. Now I'm going to go over here to this area where there was a little bit of that turquoise paint because it just happens to be that alcohol dissolves vinyl paint. Well, it's a test for shellac and it's also a removal agent for whatever's left of that, that paint. Now, is that sticky? No, it's not. Maybe a little bit. But I'm not convinced. I'm reluctant to say here goes nothing, but uh, uh, th this is a moment where there's no place else I can test this. This is a little bit of diluted wood ble bleach. I've got finish that exists in this area here, but this is, does not have any finish. This is water-based. After I glue this, I don't need any more water down in that area because it's just going to tend to release the the glue, so as I said, here goes nothing. Not that I can tell anything's going on any different. A little bit of a dark area right up in that area too, and along that inlay, so. But as you can see, it's following the wood grain down into the wood fiber and it abruptly stops. Where well this turned a very light gray after about an hour which I'm rather pleased with because uh, if it's light gray then it won't make it very difficult for me to give it this this color. You'll notice that this area is a little grayer anyway than the the outside I'm not sure about the wood. I think this is walnut and I think this is mahogany. But if we give it the, the spit test, I think a lot of that I think a lot of that is gone. Not totally. It's gonna need a just a little bit of uh a little bit of yellowing and a little bit of red toner, I think. But you can only tell while it's wet. I'm just using saliva rather than the mineral spirits because I don't want to clean the oils back out of it. I've already done that. Okay, let's get caught up here. Uh, yeah, I have been unable to video all the processes. It's just too difficult to be working in tedious situations and be minding the camera and I don't have anybody else to do that so I'm just going to kind of go through what I've done where we left off we had a lot of ripples here this was loose what this is is animal glue sitting on a coffee cup warmer bring some up in a syringe get underneath each little split and then manipulate the glue back and forth thumbnail scraper spatula whatever pick up any excess then with a marble block that's nice and cool and a weight clamp and several hours and what you get is everything attached down 
So I have done a little sanding. Um, I think I'm at 240 grit right now. I have applied a little bit more bleach. Still looks a little dark in this area. I don't like to wet it with water because that just releases the glue. But I can show with alcohol that this right here doesn't have any finish and this does. Actually that's not a real good test. I, sh I should use mineral spirits to or shellac to determine what the ultimate color is going to be. It looks a little gray but I think the, uh, the shellac will warm that up a little bit. So now I'm on to the veneer that I'm going to replace versus the veneer that I or the damage. Next is to do the veneer patch here and the inlay patch here and there's a little bit of damage uh, around the inlay area that will get done with the uh, slack fill sticks and brush graining markers etc. Well I've been going through some veneer packs I think this is rosewood or I wouldn't have kept it. Okay, we've got our glue at almost 140 it was until I set it down. Put some on this piece. We've got this little inlay here. So. Give this a quick shot in the microwave. Be right back. Okay, we're back at 140. Problem was, is I didn't have it on the coffee warmer and it cools off quickly. If I had a lot more to do, that might be important. So, we've got a little piece here, and then there's a chip. small tucked in there pretty well rub a little around here nice thing about the high glue is, is that it will wipe off this is cold it's been waxed There you go. 
Well, good morning. I decided to leave these on overnight. A little twist and it should release. And I can see that there is a, a little bit of a hide glue, a little bit of hide glue uh, residue here, which should just very easily kick off. Kind of going to go with the grain here. And be careful not to uh, disturb that inlay. We'll just go right up to that. There's a tiny little inlay inside of the eighth inch inlay. This will scrub off with water, but I don't want to introduce a lot of water to it. And there I've picked up a little bit of veneer, so I have to be really careful. So we're going to end up putting a little bit more glue there. May get a close up of this one. I'm going to move over here. It's a little bit proud right now and it's a little long as was intended, but we can we can take that off. It's a little bit of blue right here another trick you can use when uh, wanting to sand along a line is to slide your paper over a, a broad knife if you you can guide it There's still a little left there that I thought maybe I'd give a brake parts cleaner or even an electronic cleaner uh, a, a quick try here. We can same thing. We're still picking this up, whatever it is. Work that ring, try to work it back in. It's, whatever it is, as it dissolves, it tends to want to migrate out. So this is pretty strange. It, it reacts to a water-based acid and reacts to a solvent base cleaner. That's definitely a new one on me. After getting this area as light as I could, I stripped the entire lid without using stripper. It was a, a mechanical stripping using a card scraper. Uh, and, of course, I did a little bit of inlay. Uh, that would be right here. I'll get a close-up of that. And there were some defects just outside of that inlay. And as I've shown in other videos, I used the iron and the shellac sticks in order to fill the voids, drag it off, and then using a credit card to scrape it level. So there's a small area there, there's a small area there, there's a repair right there, and there's one on the edge somewhere that I've already treated, and I, I don't actually see it right now. After doing that, 
becomes necessary to use a graining touch-up brush, which is a very fine tip brush, you know, all the kinds of different colors. I think we've got several pans here for shading, but as you can see, you can make a, a pretty small line. And that represents the, the grain that's here on the bias, as well as some of the figuring that's here. So the plain color, let's go for this, plus, plus this equals wood grain. But what I'm going to do now, I put a coat of shellac on this since we've uh, last took some shots and I've sanded it once or twice and um, I have a couple different grits here. I've got some 400 and some 600. Some people would recommend using a pad in order to flatten this out, but I actually prefer using my fingers because I am concentrating on areas that I see where I can see a brush stroke and I want to sand on that brush stroke, that overlap, until it becomes flush. Now I'm starting to see the uh, the bottom of these brush marks come very near to the surface. I think a little blending is, is in order to, to fill that in and another sanding or two. So I think we're going to get right to it here. Dust this off. Use the tack rag. Now what I have here is a wad of cotton inside of a piece of tightly woven sheep sheet like a bed sheet and I've twisted this I'm squeezing out a residue of shellac that has been thinned and it has a little bit of oil linseed oil in it for lubrication and if it's wet, for French polishing, that's generally too wet. But I'm not going to French polish. I'm actually just wiping on shellac.
Okay, I have a brand new gray Scotch Brite here. It's interesting to note that while it's, it seems to cut better than an older one, it it really it really isn't doing anything. So this is some 800 sandpaper and then rather than using my fingers I'm going to double pad it here for a little leveling. I'm going to take the sanding block and remove some of the debris on the, uh, the 600, which once it builds up like that, it, it, it rides on the, the surface of the accumulation there, and the grit's not really where it needs to be, which is flat on the surface. Brush any particles that would be underneath the paper off. Feel that uh, there's nothing there. I'm going to do a little more. Okay, I've just brushed this off. I'm going to attack it one more time. And I'm going to get out my rubber here. That's what they call it when you have a, a wad of cotton and shellac. Squeeze out the excess. Dab it on my hand. It's still wet. This is too wet for French polishing. I don't know if you can see the glisten on my hand, but that's too wet for a French polish. I'm going to put just a drop of oil, oil density oil, right there in the center. You hope that this slides a little bit better. It's a very light touch. Try not to miss any spots, but you can't go back. Once you're down and back up, you gotta do it again. Moderate pressure. Probably shouldn't have done those last two strokes. That's really not in the playbook, but that's basically how it's done. Well, that'll be the last coat for today. So we'll, we'll put this up for the night. Let that get nice and cured. We'll let nib it off again and we'll progressively get down to using a little more oil, a little more alcohol, a little less shellac.